Coach Rob is in the middle of session one of UNC basketball camp, and he's had his first opportunity to get his eyes on the newcomer. So the big question, who has impressed him the most? You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Thursday, June 20th, 2024. Welcome into the Locked On Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shaden. You're joining us at the place to get your Tar Heels content every single day. Thanks for making us your first listen or watching. A special shout out to all you everydayers out there and all the members of the Locked On Tar Heels Discord family. It's good to be together. Glad you all are here. Coming up on the show today, man, this is a fun, fun time. And I know it's like we've just come to the end of the actual athletic season, but there's a lot of fun stuff that happens in the summer, especially today's show. Why? Because Coach Rob is coming to us actually from his dorm room at uh, on campus in Chapel Hill, where he is working Carolina basketball camp. Uh, today, Thursday, is the end of session one. And so we're going to be kind of talking about what he's experienced so far, what he's seeing from the newcomers, freshmen, transfers, what he's seeing from the returnees, the six guys there, and just some stories about what's going on, what alumni have been around this week. And then next week, we'll do some of the same thing with session two and Montrose camp, all of that. By the way, speaking of Coach Rob being there, we're going to have a Locked on Tar Heels family meet and greet this Friday night, tomorrow, 7 o'clock p.m. at Town Hall Burger and Beer at the Durham location, 7 o'clock p.m. Make sure you are there. Coach Rob will be there. And I know there's already several other confirmed. So uh, if you want to come and hang out with Coach Rob or other Locked on Tar Heels Discord family, man, make sure you come be part of that. All right, Coach. I know that you guys are having a blast. I know that you're exhausted. And so we're grateful for you taking time out of that schedule to still be with us this week. Where I want to start with, because I know it's always the newcomers that people are most excited to hear about. Let's start with the freshmen, Ian Jackson, Drake Powell, James Brown. From those three guys, who has really stood out to you the most just so far in your first couple times of seeing them? Yeah, I've only got to see them play a couple times. It, uh, they didn't play last night. Uh, I didn't get to see him play this afternoon. Uh, that's I uh, had a little meeting at that time. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute, y'all. Stay tuned. Um, Drake Powell is going to be my favorite player. I think I really believe he's going to be my favorite player on this team. It's just he's I got just just and again some of his first impressions. So you get a chance to meet somebody the first time, and he just seems like a great young man, super kid. Not not real loud. I mean, kind of a quiet, but he's just um, that silent assassin. I think he's going to be. He's got a complete game he can defend he can shoot uh i think it was monday night he played just played great and uh but his emotions never change it's like he he's supposed to be like that he's supposed to play well and he goes out there and does it i think he's going to guard the best player on the other team a lot of nights whether it's a guard or forward he's going to guard uh, anybody anytime i think he loves the challenge but he can also score he also makes shots and he he actually shot the ball from the perimeter a lot better than i was expecting so really hmm. uh, so or he's the guy that I've been uh, been most impressed with. And it, felt, it sounds like from defensively, that seems like it would take a lot of pressure off Seth Trimble because it feels like he's always got so much pressure to be like the solitary lockdown guy. But Drake joining forces with him, right, Coach? I mean, does that does that add up to you? Oh, yeah. I think this team likes to defend, is going to want to defend more than they had in the past. I think they have a group of guys who all kind of like to, you know, they like to do the dirty work. Hmm. Um I, I expect it to be a better defensive team. Obviously, it, the rebounding is going to be concerning because who's going to grab the rebounds once it happens? But if, if they play the style that I'm hoping that they'll play, uh, of being able to get out and maybe pressure the wings and, and trap a little bit more and maybe do some more full court pressure, even if it's just man to man, just, you know, hawking the ball off the floor, um, I think it's going to be a, a lot different style. Um, so I think the rebounds will be different. I think they'll come off the rims different. And I think it's going to be a really fun team to watch. Maybe on the defensive end, it'd be more fun to watch them than teams we've seen in the past. Interesting. Now, uh, I think it's also really encouraging to hear what you just said about Drake Powell's shooting as well. I think, you know, we've expected from, from word one of knowing about him, it was like, he's the defender, he's the guy, but that offensive game we've heard has been progressing. And it sounds like from what you've seen uh, that that is true in person as well. 
He definitely played great. You talk about James Brown. James, again, he, I don't think he's going to get a ton of playing time right away. He's a sweetheart of a kid, and he plays super hard. And uh, his, you know, he's hard with that left hand. Uh, even though he's right-handed, he loves to shoot with his left. And he's really great around the rim, and he runs the floor. They can run. Everybody can run. There's, I mean, we talk about Armando got quicker, and he was able to get up and down the floor. These guys can sprint up and down the floor. I mean, everybody out there uh, can get up and down the floor. And again, the pace of the game is going to be different, I think, than what we've seen. But it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun to see. This team's got a lot of talent. And coach, you say all that, and we haven't even talked about for what who for most people is the most heralded freshman, Ian Jackson. Uh, you sent me just a little three second snip of him just getting up and throwing a ball down the other night, coach, and that got me a little happy. Uh, what what are you seeing from Ian in the first couple times of seeing him? He's probably the most talented out of those that group. Um, and again, I don't necessarily think Drake's a better player because I like him better. It's just that that first impression. I just really enjoyed getting to meet him and spending some time with him. But I think Ian's the more talented, you know, of the three. I think he's going to be um, – and, again, he can score. He can score from all different levels, from three levels. He can score inside, outside. He can that mid-range. He can do a little bit of everything. And I, I think he's going to be just an explosive guy for us. And, um, I mean, that. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the one figuring out playing time for the guards. <laughs> so you got you got six guys that can all play and are all going to want to play a lot of minutes. Yeah, uh, it seems like there's going to have to be uh, a lot of three guard lineup, a lot of small ball four kind of stuff. I mean, and and we've been speculating on that. And from what you're seeing, I think we'll see that come to fruition. Speaking of maybe small ball four, coach, let's transition to talking about the transfers, Cade Tyson and Ven Allen Lubin. Uh, why don't you talk about what you're seeing from those guys? Well, I've seen Cade Tyson uh, sign a lot of autographs. <laughs> um, he, he's been very, and I think it's cool. I think he seems to really embrace this new, um, you know, I think celebrity is a good way to put it. But when you, you know, you, you're a college player, that's cool. But you're a college player at Carolina, it's completely different. Uh, so our bus pulled in yesterday and he was mobbed by kids outside, just signing everything, uh, went into dinner and he came in and he just mobbed again, signing, uh, autograph after autograph. So I think it's been uh, a really cool transition for him. Uh, he can shoot it. I think that's what everybody wants to hear. He can make shots. And the other thing about him is he's bigger than I thought he was. I was going to ask he's, about that. Good. He's legit six, eight. I mean, standing next to him, he is big he's bigger than Cormac he's bigger than what I expected him to be so I I do anticipate seeing him play more uh probably more for than you know everybody's worried about who can he stay in front of the little guards he's not gonna be guarding the little guards you know he's gonna be big and strong and, and have to fight more uh, of those four or fives than uh than guarding that that one and two guy for sure man that that's incredible I think because that's the thing people keep questioning to me is his shooting going to translate? And is he really as big as everyone says he is? And without me even asking, you just answered both of those questions. So, Coach, do you have, before we go to Vin Allen, do you have any concern about Cade Tyson's game transitioning from Belmont up to North Carolina? No, I don't. I don't. I think he's going to transition great. I, I, I anticipate him to play a lot. And um, again, he guys who make shots play. It's that simple. Uh, I've been doing the, the shooting station this week. And I tell kids all the time, you want to play? Be your team's best shooter. You want to play? Be your team's best defender. Put those two together, you're all conference player. But he can make shots and he can make deep shots and his size will allow him to get shots off even against maybe quicker defenders because he's so big. Uh, he won't even see a lot of it. So uh, I'm excited. I think the kid can really play. And that reminds me, just hearing a lot of that reminds me so much of Cam Johnson. I know they're different players, but Cam was never the fastest or most athletic, but the dude had that God-given height and he could knock down a shot from anywhere. And let's remember, folks, about Cade Tyson. He had more two-point attempts than three-point attempts last year. So it ain't just him hanging out, uh, hunting shots beyond the arc. Coach, let's transition to Van Allen Lubin. Uh, this is, I think, the enigma for a lot of people, the why did we go land him from, from Vanderbilt? Are you getting some of those questions answered as you see him? Yeah, there's two things that I really wanted to see. And, and, and the big thing is the rebounding. You know, we've all talked about who's going to rebound. He has a knack for the ball. He just seems to have the ball around him. He knows where to go and how to position himself. He uses his body super well. He's not huge, but he uses his body great, being able to, to, to use an upper body bump or a little, you know, get his legs where he needs to to, to box somebody out to be able to get the – 
wherever he is, the ball seems to be. And then he's got great hands. When it gets to him, he's it's his. He's not going to let anybody get to it. He's strong. Uh, he's more athletic than he looked. He's more athletic than I thought he was watching him on tape, watching his uh, his stuff on Synergy. Uh, he just didn't look super athletic. He's more athletic than I thought. Just watch him in person. So uh, he's definitely going to be part of the rotation. Definitely a, a big piece. Um, he's not seven foot, but he's going to be able to provide some of that inside depth that we need. And uh, I'm excited about it. That's encouraging to hear, man. So, folks, uh, great, great to get these initial thoughts from Coach Rob on these guys. And what's neat is he gets to see them all the rest of this week and into next week as well to continue forming more grounded opinions on them, getting to see them in action more, getting to see how that chemistry comes together as well. Now, we've been talking about all these newcomers, but my man, Coach Robinson, you know that there are six more returners who are coming back, who they're continuing to work on their game as well, get better, get stronger, grow closer as a unit. And that's where we're going to go next, because that includes the ACC Player of the Year, RJ Davis, and his backcourt mate, Elliot Cadeau. We'll get to those guys and the rest of the returners in just a second. Right after I tell you about eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits to LED headlights and more. Whether you're into speed or power or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your parts guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're running rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. We've just gotten Coach Rob's first impressions on the five newcomers to the Carolina basketball program this year, uh, the, the three freshmen and the two transfers. But Coach, we want to get to the six returning players. And while this is not first impressions, we could maybe call it next impressions or updated impressions. And so just to remind everybody of those six, it's two returning starters, Elliot Cadeau and RJ Davis. The Jalen's Jay Witt and Jay Wash, Jalen Withers, Jalen Washington, Seth Trimble, who remember entered the transfer portal, came back, huge win, and then our guys Zayden High as well. So, Coach, why don't we start uh, with those two returning starters, the ACC reigning player of the year, and Elliot Cadeau as well? What are you seeing from those guys early? Uh, RJ Davis is really, really good. I don't <laughs> know if everybody knew that or not. News flash, uh, but he's. <laughs> He's, he's unbelievable. And uh, uh, with Danny Green in the gym, Danny's trying to get back and rehabbing and playing. And uh, he played phenomenal, just great basketball. RJ's the best player on the floor. You know, he just, he was the best player on the floor. He's the leader. He's out there do, doing what he does. And he's, nothing's changed. His motivation, I think, if anything, is more than what it was last year. Uh, he wow. still has a lot to prove. And he played, he's just playing great. And uh, it's, it's going to be something, I think it's going to be something really special. Uh, to see him get even better than he was this year. Um, it's hard to say that. I know it's hard to say that. Uh, is, is there, let me ask you really quick. With, with yeah. RJ, is there anything specific that you've seen him grow in, or is it just kind of all around he just seems like a better player? Like, what, what's making you say that? It looks – everything looks easier, hmm. if that makes any sense. He, it just looks like he's not playing as hard, but yet he's still as quick and fast, but he doesn't look – to, to be expending the, the energy that it took maybe two years ago. Uh, it just, everything's smooth. Everything's, this is the big thing, I think. It's, it's confident. Hmm. It's just everything's in a confident way, and he just carries himself like, I'm the best player on the floor. Just follow me. Just get me the ball. When we need a bucket, it's going to come to me. I'll take care of everything else. That's the kind of, and, it, and it's not a loud, brash talk. It's just a confident swagger as he walks up and down the floor awesome. and everybody knows who the man is. And you need, you need that. You need that in the program where you need to know if we need the bucket, this is where it's going to go. You know, if, if we need somebody to step up and make a play, you know, somebody's going to be able to do that. And uh, he's that guy. That's awesome. All right. I interrupted you as you were getting to Elliot. Go ahead. Yeah, no, Elliot just looks, I mean, he looks quicker. Uh, he looks stronger. He's definitely put some some good weight on. It's not bad weight, but he does look bigger and stronger. Um, again, 
he's making shots. He's, he's doing what he has to do to get better. And uh, the thing I love about it is that in pickup games, he and RJ are always opposite each other. Mm. They're not playing together. They're not trying, hey, let's go run the table. Let's, you know, you know, it's those guys challenging each other. They iron sharpens iron. They're really fighting every night, They're challenging each other, but they can do it in a way that great teammates do where neither one gets mad at each other. They're just pushing each other. That's why Elliott's going to be better, you know, come next year because of everything he has to do every day, trying to guard and trying to make plays against RJ. I think the question that a lot of people probably have with Elliott is, is there more confidence in his outside shooting, right? Like that feels like the biggest step that a lot of people wanted to see from him. Yeah. In reality, it doesn't matter what he does now. It's when the lights come back on, you know, that's what it's going to come down to. He's, he's making shots. Sure. He's going to be a better, he's going to, he's putting all the work in he needs to do. He's got all the people there working with him. It's just a matter of come November, December, and ultimately, hopefully, you know, April, can he make the shots when, when, and I believe he can, I believe he will. Uh, but I do think some of it's mental. I think it's just, he needs to be able to see the basketball go in early in the year in games that matter. And I think he's going to be just fine. Man, that's great. Well, why don't we stay in the backcourt? I want to get to the Jalen's, but let's go ahead and talk Seth Trimble while we're, while we're talking backcourt guys, uh, man, just from pictures, it looks like he's put on like 87 pounds of muscle coach. Is that, is that what you're seeing in real life? He's bigger. I talked to Jonas a little bit this morning. Uh, he was um, helping Ed Davis do some of his rehab. Ed just tore his Achilles, so they were together. Got a chance to visit with them a little bit. Uh, as having surgery on both my Achilles, I can relate uh, with Ed. <laughs> but um, no, those guys are in the weight room all the time. And Jonas is, if not the best, one of the best, you know, strength coaches in the country. He's been here for since Coach Williams came back. He's been here over 20 years. Those guys are getting bigger, stronger, more athletic. Uh, not that Seth needed to become more athletic because he's already <laughs> flying around the gym, but he had one dunk uh, the other night where he just seemed to, it was one of those, Michael, he just kind of jumped and uh, do I want to do two hands or one hand or what, how do you know, just kind of, oh, okay, I'll just throw it in. Um, but that's the, it's just, he's still just head and shoulders, no pun intended, uh, athletically over everybody else right now. That, that's great to hear. Okay, let's go to the front court. And and I want to talk about both Jalen's and then we'll get to Zayden High as well. With Jalen Washington, I think with Carolina not bringing in a front court transfer other than Van Allen Lubin, uh, I think another big question a lot of people are wanting to know and wanting to get some confirmation on is, is Jalen Washington in particular taking enough strides where he can really step into a much bigger role this coming season? Yeah, I think you're going to see system changes. They're not going to have somebody like Armando just to throw the ball back to the basket type situations. It's going to be who's playing better. And that's a dangerous thing because that means in practice, everybody's got to be fighting every day for every minute. Uh, and as a coach, you love that because there's no days off. There's no, there's no, there's no, you know, you can't have a drill off. You have to fight for everything, every second of every day. And both the Jalen's, I think are, are very capable. They're very different, obviously, type of players. Um, but I think you're going to see a real battle for position uh, for time at the five. Um, and I think Van Lubin could be one of them. I think you put those three guys there. I still love James Brown. I think he's a great kid. He's not going to play a ton of minutes, but I think he can fight those guys and practice every day and make them better. And uh, I, I, practice is going to be a war. Uh, I know they, they start some summer practices here soon. and I wish I could, you know, I obviously can't be there, but I would love to be there just because practices are going to be absolute war every single day. Hmm, man. Do you, Coach, I, I know for a lot of the fan base, there there's that Jalen Withers three that he took in the Alabama game that just has loomed over this offseason for a lot of people. Does, I, does it feel like he's just kind of been able to move past that, move on and just look, look, I just got to move forward. I'm an athlete you know, goldfish as uh, Ted Lasso talks about that whole thing. Uh, do, do you think he's able to just push on past and be ready for a great year? Yeah, he's not worried about that anymore. It's just, it's, it's water under the bridge. It's done. Nothing you can do about it. No reason to look back. It's always time to just push forward, uh, forgetting what is behind and pressing towards the market in front of us. That's, that's what he's got to do right now. I think I read that in a book somewhere, Coach, that maybe we uh, live our lives by. Uh, let's talk about our guy, Zayden High. What what kind of leaps and strides is he taking that could allow him uh, to be a bigger factor and play more minutes this year? Yeah, he's looked great, and I think he's going to fight too. And his, He's obviously very athletic. Um, 
his form lends itself to being a good shooter. It just looks good. It looks really good. And he's made some shots, and he looks like he can make more. And I think just because his form is so good, I think that he'll have opportunities to um, to play because of the situation inside. And I think if he plays well, he's going to get minutes. And if he doesn't play well, he's not going to get minutes. I think that's, uh, you know, that's the way at least three guys are going to be in there. You know, and that's just the, that's the reality of it right now. All right. Good. Great insights, Coach, on all six of those guys. Excited to see and hear more of what you experience over the next week or so. And then uh, we'll circle back around to this same conversation next week. Looking forward to that. Now, to wrap up today's show, we always have story time with Coach Rob. Well, guess what? He's actually at camp where all these stories come from. So we're going to get a story time from literally this week. Talk a little bit about some of these alumni that Coach already mentioned are there. And Coach mentioned a meeting that he had earlier on Wednesday. We're going to talk about that meeting a little bit as well. All that coming up in just a second. One of the best things that happens every summer at Carolina, and part of what makes this Carolina basketball family so great, is all the alums coming back. Uh, Coach, we were talking earlier on Wednesday, and and you had just mentioned there's not as many back this week. You're expecting more at camp session number two, uh, but there are a couple fun guys around. Would you just share some of that, uh, who you've seen in in those interactions? Yeah, one of my all-time favorite Tar Heels, Danny Green, is in, 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 he's on campus right now. He's working with his trainer. He's been in every day. Uh, came and spoke to the whole group uh, of kids and talked about his path and just had a really cool time talking with him. Uh, Joel James, one of the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Um, it's been fun to see him play. He, he's he's a better player today than he was when he was here. And people are like, oh, he wasn't a very good player. He didn't do much. He would he would start next year at the five uh, if if you know if he had eligibility left. He's that much better. Uh, explosive, just, I mean, he looked great the other night. So it was a lot of fun to see him play. Uh, and then Garrison Brooks. Garrison is just, a, again, just one of my favorite players of all time. Walked in the other night. He didn't play, but uh, got a chance to, you know, just give him daps and hang out a little bit and just, you know, see how he's doing. I think he just signed with the Suns for their summer league team. And uh, he just, again, looks great. But uh, we've heard rumors of Cole Anthony next week, Brady Manick next week. Um, you know, some other guys like that to play in that. Um, and next week it'll be Tuesday, not Wednesday, but Tuesday okay. uh, at around 3, 3.30 uh, in the Smith Center. And it is open. People can come in and watch. Um, but it's always great to see who's who's going to come in and, and, and get a chance to play. But um, there was somebody else. You mentioned Ed somebody. Davis earlier that he had come in. Ed obviously can't play uh, because of it. Melvin Scott. Melvin was oh, there Melvin, today. Oh, nice. Yeah, so just just to see those guys come in and um, and and visit with their teammates and former teammates and even guys from different teams from different generations, just to see Carolina family come in and, and just it's really cool just to be able to see that relationship. Uh, it's just it's awesome. That's great. It makes sense about Brady being there next week because Pack uh, Pack was actually telling me yesterday when we recorded that that um, Brady is back in the states now. They had been texting some, and so I wouldn't be surprised at all if if that's true. Um, that he comes over next week. So I uh, have to complete that circle between you and Pac and Brady. That's a, a fun little uh, locked on Tar Heel circle right there. I love to hear it. Uh, Coach, earlier you mentioned that you had a meeting that you were like literally that you came from right before uh, you and I hopped on to record. Just wanted to check in on that. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really trying to get this book done. It's been something that we've been working on for six years. And uh, the two people I wanted to interview the most are the – Two that I hadn't been able to get interviews with, and uh, I accomplished one of them today. I got a chance to meet with Hubert uh, from about 3.30 to 4.30 just, just to be able to, to ask some questions about camp. And uh, again, same thing we do here. I, I, I audio taped about 15 minutes of it, then I turned it off, and then we spent 45 minutes just catching up on family and life. And, uh, his, his life, we coach the same sport. Uh, we're both head coaches. Our jobs are so different. I mean, so wild. I, I couldn't do his job. I don't, I wouldn't want to do his job. Uh, he's constantly doing stuff. That's just, uh, it's just, it, he can never, in his own words, he's always on. There's no downtime. There's no time just to rest. There's always something to do. There's always something going on. Um, and he's just so crazy busy that we had to schedule, schedule a meeting just to be able to hang out. Um, and he, he, he actually said, the last thing he said, he said, I want to go over to Granville and just eat in the cafeteria with the kids 
He says, but I can't because they're just swarm him. And he's, you know, he, he said, I will sign autographs after I'm done eating. And the kids hovered around and waited until he had his last bite. And as he took his last bite, kids just swarmed in and he starts having to sign autographs. And uh, it, was, it was hysterical. Um, but it was a really great time just to hang out with him and catch up and uh, find out how his family's doing and, and to hear him talk about how excited he is to coach uh, Elijah. And, uh, and Gracie's, you know, a student here. She's actually doing some studying abroad right now. And then uh, Micah's, um, Micah's going to be a D1 soccer player. I mean, wow. he's just good. So just to be able to catch up with family type stuff is, uh, is pretty awesome. Man. So glad you had that time. And uh, folks, as a reminder, Coach Rob is working on this book of all these stories from his decades uh, working at the Carolina basketball camp. And as he said, Coach Davis was one of those two final pieces that he wanted to get to. So, Coach, I'm so happy for you to have had that time with Coach Davis today. And uh, we're hoping for getting that second uh, interview with that other person coming up here pretty soon. And then hopefully that's going to come together. Now, Coach, you had told me that you had a story from literally camp this week. Why don't you go ahead and have us a little story time with Coach Rob? And not just this week, it was today. Just walking into the gym, walking into the Smith Center this morning. We walk in through the, the visitor's tunnel, and uh, uh, Kevin Madden is in my gym, and uh, Marcus Page is in my gym, and uh, Octavius Barnes, who played football and basketball. You know, we got this great group of guys, and uh, I walk in the gym this morning, and I see somebody across the gym sitting down in a chair, and it's not one of my, our guys. It's it's just a and somebody visiting, and I'm like that. That looks like Tony Orr. Tony Orr played for me 1999, to 2003. So you're talking about 25 years ago, and it, it, there's no way it could be him. But it just this guy looked just like him. Well, as I'm walking across the court, and as I get closer, it's Tony Orr. It's him. It's my guy, and I haven't seen him or talked to him probably in it's five, six, seven years. It's been a long time. And I looked at him. I almost started crying. I'm like, dude, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I knew he was friends with Phil Ford. I didn't realize how good of friends he was with Phil Ford, but he was here to see Phil and uh, he was getting some sneakers from Hoots uh, that they wanted to give to Phil. So he was kind of the in-between guy. So he had a couple pairs of shoes, uh, but I just hugged his neck and just hugged him and just, I mean, it's so great to see him. And, um, but again, it's, it's when my two worlds collide that I have most fun. When it's when it's Carolina and my my teams, and then to have them come together, it, it's pretty awesome. So uh, he's going to be here for a couple of days. We'll get a chance to hang out. Uh, he had to run and go see Phil. Uh, Phil's the priority. You got, if it's Phil Ford, you, you can drop everything and go. But uh, but just to see Tony and it, it's just a just an awesome. It's just a one of those surprise you know things that just kind of lifts you during the day. So uh, it was an awesome awesome experience this morning. That's special. And especially when it's unexpected like that, it just kind of boggles your mind how all that comes together. Oh man, that's a great story. And I, just the random Phil Ford connection. That's so great. And uh, yeah, just, I, you're right about the Phil Ford aura, right? I remember you and I shared an elevator with him in the, the back tunnels of the Smith center earlier this year. And it's just like, hi coach for, you know, it's just like, there he is. So, uh, it, it, it really is special stuff that happens there in the Smith center. So, uh, thank you for sharing that one coach. All right, y'all, you don't get these insights anywhere else because coach Rob is there doing this and, uh, is not only is there seeing it, but has the wisdom, um, and all the decades of coaching experience to know how to unpack it for us. So coach, we are indebted to you as always. Um, for sharing all this with us. And uh, man, I hope it's been as meaningful for all of you listening and watching as it has been for me. A reminder, coming up tomorrow night, Friday, 7 p.m. at Town Hall Burger and Beer, the Durham location. Coach Rob will be there, a little locked on Tar Heels meet and greet. Come hang out, see Coach Rob, interact with him in the flesh, not just on video or listening to his ears or to his voice uh, on your podcast feed. That's great. And again, we'll hit this again next week as Coach has Montrose Camp and Session 2 behind him. Lots more great stories, lots more of seeing the guys in action and more to more information to be able to give to us from that. If you're not already subscribed to the show, please do so on audio and video. If you haven't joined the Locked on Tar Heels Discord community, you're missing out on that as well. Come for the Tar Heels, stay for the community. It's free to join and the link is in the show notes. As always, it's a great day to be a Tar Heel. We'll talk again tomorrow to wrap up the week, but until then, peace.